Thank you for joining us for Autism on the Road. This is a presentation by the Autism Society of North Carolina. My name is Nancy Nestor, and I am one of the Autism Resource Specialists in the Charlotte office. Today we have some objectives that we are going to look at as we do the presentation. We're going to look at the core features of autism and think about how autism looks in your life. We're going to identify the challenges and safety concerns you might have, examine strategies to help your child prepare for being out in public, consider creating an emergency plan, and then find some more resources for yourself. So when we think of autism, we think of four primary areas of differences. When we think about language, it could be present, although a person with autism may use it in unconventional ways, such as reversing pronouns, referring to themselves as you and other people as I, or they may just refer to themselves by their own name. If they do talk, they may talk only about restricted topics. In looking at social interactions, you may see an impairment with the person with ASD as they may not be able to successfully enter a conversation. They may have no idea when others have finished talking and they may not be able to use polite conversation when talking to others, so they may be seen as being rude. Sensory and behavioral differences are co common also. They may be a picky eater or they may have very sensitive skin and have a hard time touching certain fabrics. They may need to cover their ears whenever certain noises become too loud for them. In looking at thinking and learning, they may be very disorganized, or they may have mastered a complex task, but they may not be able to do simple things, such as tying their shoes. So regardless if your child has Asperger's syndrome or if they have classic autism, They'll have challenges in these four areas. The challenges may not be as severe, but they will be there. There's no correlation between language, communication skills, level of autism, intelligence, sensory, or social capabilities. The tricky thing for those with Asperger's syndrome or high-functioning autism is that people may often assume that just because they can speak well, that they do not have any other issues associated with autism. Others may be surprised to find out that when sensory issues take over, it's difficult for a person with HFA to transition or that normally talkative Aspie child can become overwhelmed and just shut down, not talking when social anxieties rise too high. In order to help each person with ASD cope, during times of overstimulation, similar methods can be used to help them. When persons with autism are under stress, it's very common for sensory issues to become more obvious, social interactions to become more limited, language may drop, and transitions may become more of a challenge. People may question the person with autism's intelligence, especially if they've never interacted with the person before. All of this can create problems if they don't understand the impact of stress. So as the saying goes, if you know one person with autism, you know one person with autism. During this presentation, think about how autism presents itself to your family member. And and consider how they may react differently when they're under stress because of an unfamiliar situation. So part of what we're going to do today is to look at various situations where you and your loved one may be out in the public. You may be running errands, going to doctors or therapy visits. You may be out for a social outing or visiting relatives or you may have them with work or out for other programs. Things we need to consider are meltdowns, running off, getting hurt or hurting others, 
breaking the law and stranger danger. So if you can look at the behavior and the, look at what's behind the behavior and work on skill deficits, how to accommodate sensory issues, address illogical thinking, and work on transition difficulties, it will help you devise strategies that can be done ahead of time in order to help the child develop the skill level that they need to go into public safely. So planning ahead. In order to plan ahead, well, first we have to prepare the individual with autism. We have to be proactive. And then we always need to make an emergency plan. So when we help the person with autism become prepared, we need to consider how well they do out in the com community. Are they able to follow directions? Do they have difficulties with transitioning or only at certain times? Can you manage their behavior? Are they able to manage their own behavior? So you come up with a plan to teach skills at home. So in order to prepare the person with autism, we have to develop and use communication systems at home so that they're already familiar with them when we go out into public. Develop schedules or stick to routines. And then we have to also teach them the calming strategies that they'll need to be able to use when they're out in public. So here's some examples of some visuals that you could use at home. Whenever we can add predictability to our children's day, they're happier and more compliant. So schedules can communicate what we expect of them and help them plan for a new routine. We want you to notice that all of these things were made of simple materials. And so we want them to be something that, or want you to realize that this is something that you can do at home. Visuals can help establish rules as well as provide a gentle reminder of them. You want to use these visual reminders in specific places where they can be used. Um, as a mother of a nine-year-old child posted this visual by the door so that her son would remember to ask permission before leaving the house and playing in the neighborhood. For some kids, this gentle reminder might be posted in the pantry alongside snacks, or maybe a, a brother or sister's room so that they will ask before coming into the room. Think about other places where this sign could be used in your house. Visuals can also establish rules as well as provide a general reminder of behavior in public. This was used by a mother of a three-year-old who had high-functioning autism and ADHD. By using this rule chart, she was helping, able to help him understand that the rules in home were very different from the rules in public. In less than a year, he went from being a disruptive little boy who ran all over the store and touched everything to a quiet little boy who listened to his mother and did not draw attention. This was done without any special rewards. He liked to go to the store and he loved getting praised for doing a good job. If possible, make sure that your child learns to read as part of their functional communication. Visual information is taken in and comprehended more easily than auditory. While out in public or in times of stress, the use of visual cues can be very effective. Tasks with several steps can be broken down into their parts. Visual schedules and checklists make it easier to follow. Decisions can be very overwhelming to those on the spectrum. Visual choices can make the process much easier for them. If your child can only choose between two items, you can start there and then increase the number of items over time 
as they're ready to consider more. People with autism struggle with letting others know that they need help. The use of a visual sign, such as these words and help cards, can provide them with the support more quickly so that they don't get overwhelmed with frustration. Some children who already know sign language can use sign in order to get help. One of the most helpful things we can do for our children is to teach them how to read their own emotions and regulate them. By using an emotional thermometer scale, we can help them begin to understand the different feelings they have and identify times when they have them. This opens the door up for planning ahead for times when they may feel stressed and it allows the them to practice skills that they'll need when they are calm so that when they become upset, they're gonna be more likely to use the calming strategies without prompting. For those who can't read, and those who don't like to draw attention to themselves, a mood thermometer shown above can function like an emotional scale in the prior slide. A child with ASD simply moves the arrow to show how they are feeling. Green means they understand what to do. Green and yellow means I understand, but I'm starting to get confused. Yellow means I'm confused and I need help. Yellow with red means I need help and I'm starting to get frustrated. Red means I'm frustrated and I need time to cool down before I can move on or process. Mood thermometers are a great, great way to help our children learn about self-awareness and to begin developing self-advocacy skills. However, in order for it to be effective, it must be used regularly which means it must be accessible, portable, and durable. When our kids are anxious, they struggle to function appropriately. So it is helpful if you can teach them calming strategies that are portable and make calming and relaxation part of their daily routine. When they're in a new situation that provokes anxiety, having calming strategies to draw on helps them cope better and allows them to begin to be more flexible and tra with transitions. And it will provide them with the tool that they can use in the future. Flow charts can help children that have high functioning autism and Asperger's syndrome learn various ways that they can react when challenges arise. Making the options visual will help Many remember what to do. Making a flowchart portable and durable can allow them to bring the flowchart with them so that you can prime them right before the situation and perhaps if needed during the event as well. Remember to make it visual, make it portable, make it accessible. We have to prepare. It's important that you use these tools and strategies at home every day or as needed. Out in the community is not the time to introduce the use of a new support tool. But when you do use them in the community, the public is often more accommodating when they see families using visual supports. People just naturally understand that this child is different and this child needs more. So usually they're more than willing to do what they can to help out. Be proactive. Visualize situations that in, might entice or present a challenge. Think about transitions or sensory concerns. Are there noises or visuals or smells that a certain place may have that would cause your child to be upset? Think about the boundaries. Are there natural boundaries that will help your child stay where they need to stay? Or is this place wide open? Think about temptations and distractions. Help the individual with ASD know what to expect before they leave the house. And make strategies visual over verbal. 
because when things get tough, we have to top, stop the talking. We have to drop it, the talking. The more you talk, the less they will hear. Use visual strategies that they can understand. Use visual instead of verbal. Creating portable schedules can be low tech and inexpensive. Place them where your child can at some point use them without prompting. Part of why we use visual schedules is that we want to build opportunities for independence. For many HFA ASPE children, they also have ADHD and their impulsiveness can get them in trouble. Using an if-then board can help them realize that there will be consequences for impulsive behavior and use this as a motivator to work towards a reward. Making it visual will help them remember why they want to control themselves. Having it accessible where they can see it without having verbal attention drawn can also help with their motivation. Schedules with lists and pictures can help a child prime for an upcoming event. It can also help your verbal child review a wonderful vacation that they enjoyed, but their disorganization makes it hard for them to talk about what they did. Social stories are a very important tool and they're a great, great way to help your child learn the expectations for an event. These are especially valuable for times when the kids have never experienced the event before. Knowing what to expect ahead of time will help them become less anxious so that they can enjoy the experience. We have to be proactive. You can create a community bag that includes tools or supplies or uh, anything that is necessary. Visual communication systems need to come, including schedules, visual cues, and pecs. Make sure you include calming tools, choice activities for waiting, snacks, a change of clothes if needed, and first aid. Have these ready at all times. And remember not to use them at home. Only use them when you're out in public. If we use the items too often, then they're going to lose their attractiveness and their effectiveness. Remember to bring visual cues and have them accessible. When others see parents using communication in public, they become more accommodating. Also, remember that for some of our children, using a headphone may not be comfortable. They may have sensory issues around headphones, so you may have to help your child learn how to wear the headphones and become comfortable with them before you take them out in public. This can be true of other sensory items as well. It may take time for them to become comfortable. We need to have an emergency plan. You have to plan for the unexpected. You have to find a close calming down space wherever you are. Think about how are you going to communicate your child's needs to anyone who may assist? And how will someone identify your child? Consider language, sensory issue, and medical needs. But don't put your child's name anywhere visible because a stranger could see their name and manipulate them into doing an unsafe, unsafe situation. Cell phones have become a wonderful way of having a current picture of your child. So it's good to always have that handy. Medical ID bracelets are helpful for those who wear them. Project Lifesaver now provides a GPS bracelet which cannot be removed. If your child has a bracelet and becomes missing, you can contact your local sheriff's department and they will come out and find your child quickly with a tracking device. To find out if your county law enforcement has Project Lifesaver, 
contact your local sheriff's department. Some phone apps can also be useful if your child is able to have a cell phone. Other tips. Educate your neighbors about your child's autism. People are usually willing to help and happy to help, but they have to know what to do. Educate business owners of the places that you frequent, and you will also find that they're generally a lot more accommodating and willing to help. Call ahead of time, check websites, and learn about any special accommodations that might be available in a place that you're going to visit. Many Google Maps have information that allow you to see a big picture of, of what is nearby in a place that you're visiting. And many places have websites which have very dis, um, dis, good descriptions of what you can expect. So call ahead or email. Let someone know that you're coming. You could plan a meet and greet with your local fire and police department. In many places, if you can visit during a quieter time of day so that they can become used to the environment without sensory overload, it's easier for them to be in the new place when maybe it is a little bit busier. Here are some important resources that you can use in order to help you begin to create some things to help you be out in the public. Do to Learn is a wonderful website it has instructions for using social stories, story strips, and other visual instructions. Identikit, with a photo of your child with the fingerprint on the back. They're offered throughout schools annually, but you can also contact them independently. Bodyguard ID bracelets. Um, they allow you to show up to two diagnoses on the bracelet. And then Project Lifesaver, um, it's actually a, an, a wrist tracking device rather than ankle. And it's currently available in most sheriff's office. You can also sign up for the Autism Risk and Safety Newsletter, which was developed by Dennis DeBow, who is a father of a child with autism and a member of the law enforcement community. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Please go to our website if you have more questions.